Hello everybody, grace and peace of Lord Jesus Christ be with you guys. Um, first I made this like four part series to Brett Keane's God Never Planned Women just because I was watching it and then responding. But you know what, I think I'm just going to do this uh, and answer his points just in the silence because he does a lot of cursing in this video again even though I had asked him if he's going to make videos about Christianity and he wants a Christian response to it. And this is probably the reason why very few Christians do respond to this video is because it's all F this and F that and well F, blah, 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 F, F, whoa, F, F, like all atheist material really on here. Uh, it it it's surprises me that they cannot carry out a conversation without cursing at their audience. You know, I know atheists respect this and they love that. Oh, yeah, well, you're really sticking it to them because you can swear. You know, what a big deal. So... His premise is that God really didn't plan to make women. That he thought that the animals would have been suitable for Adam and then he made a helper and that was women and yada, yada, yada. First of all, if you're going to look at it that way, well, what does the Bible say? It says that Christ dying for our sins was uh, set to be from the foundation of the world. Well, Entailed with that plan is Christ coming and being born of his mother Mary. So therefore, it had to be a part of God's plan for women to uh, exist for that plan also that God had, um, if we're going to go by the Bible, uh, to exist. And that pretty much throws out his whole premise. But then he throws a whole bunch of things in on the side. Um, and it's time to destroy his arguments as we always do. For one, in the Old Testament, it says that he created them male and female. And then later on, it talks about women being created uh, last, coming out of man. Well, there's that is distinguishing the distinct connection as humans that we have to one another. That, we, that, that women, St. Paul writes that um, uh, man came from women and... And also women are born from God, but when it comes to God, all comes from God. And that's really the way to look at it. Um, he talks about men ruling over women. Well, this was one of the curse in Genesis. Um, he says that that brought up this uh, mythological story of Lilith, which is really just like a Gnostic interpretation being added on, kind of like what we see outside sources who weren't the disciples, who didn't know it, just put in their own interpretation and spin on the scripture, kind of like Brett Keen is doing here, actually. Um, and so it was largely rejected because of its uh, heretical values. But when we read in things like Galatians 3.28, Now there is neither male nor female, slave nor free, Jew nor Greek, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. When we look at the fact that in the Bible there are women prophets, when we look at the fact that women were... Um, uh, great leaders of the early church and really helped it move along. Um, when we look at the fact that we have the Blessed Mother Mary um, is a highly esteemed woman in our faith. Um, and basically he, he brings up about women, men ruling women. Well, that is one of the curses. And as Christians, we fight against the curse. This is what uh, we are to be going against the mindset of the curse brought about by satanic influences. Um, that is the fruit of disobeying God. And so we want to come back into obedience to God. And the picture used in the scripture is um, the believers being the bride of Christ and Christ being the husband. And so we as men as husbands are to follow that model and so like christ gave himself up for the church how christ still provides and nourishes and builds up the church and honors people who are a part of him so we will do that with our women um in christianity women are uh princesses of the king and highly esteemed um, they can be prophets if they choose to uh, seek after God to get receive the gift of prophecy. Um, and so 
there are many strong biblical characters who are women, uh, and it is very important, their role. And when it speaks about women being silent in the church, there's a lot of contextual issues that need to be taken uh, taken a look at that Brett seems to just gloss right over. As an example, in the ver in uh, Timothy, when he brings up First Timothy, uh, I believe it's First Timothy fourteen. Um, what it is saying is not that women are saved from childbearing, uh, giving birth to children, but it makes them complete. That it it brings the wholeness to the family. It 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 is that is an important role of women. However, um, if uh, one woman decides to uh, devote her life completely to the Lord, that is also acceptable. They don't need to. Salvation comes from Christ, for there is no other name under heaven in which we are to be saved. Um, they are saved by Christ, just like the man, his atonement. Um, however, they, in doing that, in living a holy life, and having children, and raising them up in godliness, makes them all the more greater in God's eyes is what's what uh, Paul is saying here in his letter to Timothy um, and and verses where women are to be silent in the church that is really where Paul is telling the people to obey the Roman law because under Roman and even Jewish law women were considered um, second class to the men and so therefore he's saying well don't be part of an uprising because many Christians were already being killed. And so he's saying, don't be so rebellious. Now's not the time um, to fight against these injustices. First, you need to establish yourself. And like Christ, he said, go the other mile for your enemy. Go that extra mile for your enemy and defeat them through love. And this is the purpose of a lot of Paul's letters, is how to rebuke uh, and fix up the problems that were going on in the church. And so, also I might add that women are just naturally better at caring for children than men are, and that the breakdown of the family really does cause nations to fall. Um, moreover, holding the family and building it up causes them to be strengthened. Um... A lot of his video is just cursing, and this is really why I didn't play it and do it um, the traditional way that I respond to his videos. And that my request to Brad is that when he makes his next video about Christianity, that he refrains from cursing in it. Uh, what's another point that he brought up in his video? Oh, yeah, that somehow women should be ashamed for being Christian? Ah, oh, that is absolutely foolish. It's funny how he holds that position that, you know, somehow this teaching will make them feel shameful. Absolutely not. Um, there, Joel 2.28 says that in the last days, God will pour a spirit on all people, both men and women, young and old. And so there is no favoritism with God, also as the scripture says. And so it's very important to understand this. However, if we look at his view uh he wants to say that you're children of animals and that's kind of foolish how you know he's looking at it that way and um yada 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 what else did he say um a lot of rambling and now I'm Oh, he assumes that Lucifer, or the one of the fallen angels who deceived Eve, was Lilith. Um, that's not really the case. The serpent, um, it, that that serpent of old, who was the devil. If we're going to go by the Bible, we need to follow it in its entirety and not bring outside teachings to it, because I can make it say anything. The Bible is quite clear that that serpent is um, a devil, one of the fallen angels, um, and uh, that it wasn't a talking snake. This is another 
uh, area where you guys go wrong because his curse was to become a snake. So he wasn't a snake before the curse when he was speaking. It means he was a serpent and he was cunning and deceptive. Um, it looks like I'm almost out of time here. Yep, so I pretty much covered all the points. Um, remember, to review, Galatians 3.28, Now there is neither male nor female, slave nor free, Jew nor Greek, for you are all, all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. We have women prophets. Women has helped establish the early church. Jesus went to the Samaritan woman at the well, which was considered really strange in Jewish eyes because not only were Samaritans considered dogs and filthy and lower class, but so were women. And so Christ goes against the prejudices. So take care, guys. See you later.